Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. For Brazil and most Latin American countries, Carmen Miranda is considered a cultural nonconformist and perhaps a prodigal daughter. But for her teeming American audience, she is just a cute samba beauty, the Brazilian bombshell and a natural performer with a fashionable prestige. This divide between mainstream American audiences and neighbouring South and Central countries defined the highs and lows of this legendary dancer. Her career life is shrouded in fame, controversy and secrecy. How was Carmen Miranda humiliated by her fans? A wise man once said that success is sweet regardless of how it is gotten, perhaps for the not too palatable road that usually leads to success. But what happens when success is the one thing that causes you pain? Carmen Miranda's career life comes in handy. She is one of those you would say thrived in career controversy and excelled in it to achieve even more greatness. Highly respected as one of the legendary leading ladies that Hollywood had ever produced, Miranda may have played in over 12 movies that made her a name to reckon with in the entertainment scene, alongside Hollywood's top-billed stars of her time. This cute and talented singer is one of the earliest representatives of Latin American culture in the United States. At least that is what it seems. But trouble started when curious American showbiz stereotyped her in a way that offended her cultural heritage. As a star performer, Carmen Miranda hit the entertainment scene for no other reason than to make ends meet and achieve fame. So it could not have been her fault that the Hollywood industry that she served decided to use her the way it deems fit, in what may be described as the arena's established selfish financial interest. Or, as some have argued, it may just be a funny means studios projected the cultural dominance of the popular American society. Though Miranda did not see anything wrong in playing the typecast roles that eventually estranged her from her country home and others, her uniqueness in those roles could not have been better portrayed. Famous for her colourful attire and noticeable headgear, Miranda became a choice talent that at a point traded as the highest paid performer. Many would agree that Carmen Miranda lived the American dream, a cute Brazilian girl that originated from the Portuguese arena and found herself in extraordinary fame. Interestingly, even with her Hollywood limelight and at the apex of her career, highly sensual Miranda hid her dark secrets because she kept her personal life away from the public eye. Carmen may have enjoyed entertainment fame, but her private life was not as entertaining as you may think. She was not free from human agony and misery. Very few are familiar with the long and meandering journey that brought this natural beauty from a small town in northern Portugal to the world's biggest entertainment platform. It's more than half a century since Carmen Miranda left humanity. Her legacy and her tragic demise would continue to remind us of a dogged soul who became a cultural reference point as an iconic image of womanhood. You can't beat her expressive eyes, pulsating smile and those ambitious tropical fruit-inspired fashions that marked her dress sense. Maria do Carmo Miranda da Cunha GCIH the Portuguese-born Brazilian musical genius, now famously known as Carmen Miranda, was dubbed the Brazilian bombshell for her fascinating display of beauty and talent. Her signature fruit hat outfit, seen in her American movies, is among the legacies that have kept her image evergreen for years, enticing even younger generations. As a young lady, Miranda was so crafty that she was designing hats in boutiques before her sojourning into the music world with her first recordings with José de Barros. A year after that, she performed Tie, as written by Hubert de Cavalho, a song that gave her early stardom in Brazil as the earliest dancer of samba. Little Miranda, who was born in 1909, was just a ten-months infant when her parents left Portugal for Rio de Janeiro. That, of course, is the last time she saw Portugal, but was still known as a Portuguese citizen. When her family nicknamed her Carmen because of her father's love for the famous Bizet's Carmen, little did they know that the name will take her this far. Her father's interest in opera is what the likes of Miranda capitalised on when she began singing and dancing as a teenager. 
If there is one thing Miranda desired most when she left the convent of St. Teresa of Lisieux School, it's to join the entertainment scene. But while Jose, her father, frowned at that, Maria, her mother, did not see anything wrong in that. Historians reported that Jose often chastised little Miranda each time his daughter goes singing, especially when she auditioned for any radio show or had sung at parties or festivals in Rio. Because of the poor financial status of Miranda's family, the younger singer began working in a tie shop at age 14, and then in a boutique, where she got skilled in hat making and perhaps began a successful venture in the hat business. Miranda's life got a dramatic turn after she was linked to Josu de Barros, the musician from Bahia. Her earliest collaboration with Brazilian music Gilberto Cavallo was said to have produced a song that sold 35,000 in its year of release. This early fame led to a two-year contract with RCA Victor, which gave them sole rights to her image. A year after that agreement elapsed, Miranda signed another two-year deal with Radio Marink Vega, said to be the most widespread Brazilian station of the 1930s. When the deal ended, she did freelance for a year, which saw Miranda as the first contract singer in the history of Brazilian radio. She was also linked with Radio Tupi and Odeon Records at different times, making her the highest-paid radio singer in Brazil at the era. At this time, critics linked Miranda's sudden rise to fame in her country to the popularity of the indigenous samba dancing style. Calma Miranda's Brazilian film career was associated with a genre of musical films that is patterned after the national carnival culture. Very remarkable is Miranda's musical number in O Carnaval Contando no Rio, which became the first sound documentary on the subject, as well as what she did in A Voz da Carnaval, doing three songs that were a mix of footage of street celebrations in Rio with an imaginary idea. Calma Miranda is arguably seen as the most popular figure in Brazilian cinema. The assertion is based on the sizable correspondence that she received. As her musical career grew, so did her fame and acceptability with her immediate society. She also carved an identity for herself with those interesting fruit hats. This came after Miranda played in the movie Banana de Terra, which is a glamorous adaptation of the traditional paraphernalia of a poor black girl in Bahia wearing a flowing outfit and a fruit hat turban, a style of clothing known as Bahania in Brazil, for its uniqueness, and had sang O Que O Que Abiana Tem. The general theme of that production was to empower a social class that was often belittled. When producer Lee Schubert gave Miranda an eight-week offer to play in The Streets of Paris on Broadway, it was to exploit her talent which he had seen while she performed at Rio's Casino de Arca. Miranda was ready to perform in New York, but would not until her band, Bando da Lua, was brought along. Schubert initially argued that many capable musicians in New York were willing to do the backup. Miranda would not agree to such because she felt that North American players would not be as authentic as their Brazilian counterparts. Schubert later agreed to her request and the six band members were contracted even though they had to pay for their journey to New York. In a strategic display of diplomacy and the socio-cultural significance and acceptability of Miranda's music to the people of Brazil, the then president, Getulio Vargas, decided to sponsor the tour, with an official statement that the Brazilian government would offset the band's transportation fee from Rio to New York. President Vargas thought that Miranda would encourage a good relationship between the North and South, Analysts even projected that the country hoped that Miranda ensures goodwill representative of the country in the United States to increase Brazil's share of the American coffee industry. Reports say Carmen Miranda took the official approval of her journey and the duty to be a good ambassador of Brazil seriously and left for New York on the SS Uruguay sometime in 1939. After the Streets of Paris Broadway debut, Miranda's role in that production catapulted her to Broadway stardom, even though she only uttered four words. She got a huge audience acceptance and reviews as notable theatre critics stated that Miranda did not just steal the show, she contributed a magnetic personality in the production with her rapid rhythm songs that made her audience go gaga. The oncomium that followed Miranda thereafter was all-encompassing, from being a star born to save Broadway from the slump in ticket sales to a 
girl who saved Broadway from the World's Fair. Her performance was played regularly on the Blue Network radio show, which had daily 55 million listeners. Her fame was extraordinary, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt officially honoured her at the White House banquet as reported. While Miranda and her US superstardom ensured, other issues about the way her career affected society began to surface. She began to lose her popularity among her home fans in Brazil. At the beginning of the 1940s, Miranda made a trip to Brazil and was warmly welcomed by her teeming fans. But that euphoria was soon greeted with media criticism. The Brazilian press had a dissenting opinion about how Miranda had accommodated American commercialism to the extent of projecting a negative side of the Brazilian cultural heritage. While the country elite spoke of her show as being too black, the media insinuated that she was singing bad-taste black sambas. The common sentiment was that Miranda was depicting a hackneyed Latina bimbo with her shows. Months after, Miranda showed up in a charity concert put together by Brazilian First Lady Darcy Vargas. The event, which had elite members of Brazil's high culture, turned out a huge disappointment for the star as her presence was met with a disturbing silence from the audience. Miranda noticed that it is not business as usual as she started singing the South American Way, which is a song from one of her club performances. The initial silent audience took a different position. This time they began to boo her. Being an experienced performer, Miranda tried her best to conclude her performance, but realised in dismay that something sad was happening at the arena as she ended the performance halfway and left the podium. Calma Miranda felt deeply hurt that she was reported to have wept backstage in her dressing room. It became another food for the Brazilian media as they agreed in their headlines describing Miranda as being too Americanized. Like we often say in the entertainment industry, every publicity is fame. This may just be the reason weeks later Miranda decided to do a Portuguese song Disaram que volta Americanizada, interpreted as they say, I've come back Americanized. Bananas is my business was another single, talking about the same issue, taken from one of her movies as she tried to launder the said Americanized image. Distressed by the situation, this great beauty left the country and did not return for more than a decade. During this period, her movies were thoroughly scrutinised by Latin American audiences for portraying Central and South America in a culturally similar way, more so practically viewed as telling a distinctive cultural story through the lens of American prejudices. The implication was that some Latin Americans thought that their values were distorted, and they were angrier that a lady from their region was responsible for the misrepresentation. Down Argentine Way is one of her productions that was heavily disapproved of by the Argentinians. The general sentiment was that it failed to depict the Argentine culture in any way. Its lyrics were supposedly chock full of non-Argentine refrains, with a setting that is a combination of Mexican, Cuban and Brazilian beliefs. I heard that the movie was prescribed in Argentina for wrongfully portraying life in Buenos Aires. The controversy did not end there, because similar sentiments were expressed in Cuba when she played Miranda's Weekend in Havana, a performance that was interpreted by her Cuban audience as highly offensive. In case you're wondering how that one panned out, Miranda's portrayal of a Cuban lady was frowned upon by the country's media analysts, who maintained that a lady from Rio could not have accurately depicted her counterpart from Havana. The dissenting voices were in agreement that Miranda did not dance anything Cuban, with some saying that what she did was simply a combination of Brazilian and related Latin cultures. Whether her performance is a representation or not, facts available show that many of Carmen Miranda's movies were adjudged a misrepresentation of Latin locals, if the Brazilian culture was erroneously judged as that of Latin America. Carmen Miranda fell in love with David Sebastian after her movie production brought them together, a movie she played opposite Groucho Marx in Copacabana. Their romance was cemented in matrimony in a 1947 Beverly Hills church. The following year, Miranda had a miscarriage of her baby after doing a show. Some issues came up between the couple and being a Catholic, Miranda did not see a divorce as a solution, 
but it seems Miranda got seriously disappointed with her husband, and she was reported to have lived in sadness. Two years after, the couple separated, but months later they made up their differences and continued their marriage. Carmen Miranda may have hidden many aspects of her private life from public scrutiny, because she was said to have been involved in several romantic connections with the likes of Mario Cunha, Carlos da Roca Faria and Aloisio de Oliveira, before coming to the U.S. Oliveira was part of the Bando da Lua in America. Famous names like John Payne, Arturo de Cordova, Dana Andrews, John Wayne, etc. have also been linked as some of her lovers. Those close to Miranda hinted at her addiction to heavy drinking and smoking and may have also taken several doses of amphetamines and barbiturates, all of which experts agreed had a profound effect on her health. When Carmen Miranda transcended to eternal glory at the regrettable age of 46 at her Beverly Hills home, the news went round about her demise with most of the media reporting that she may have died of a heart attack, though later reports suggested pregnancy complications due to preeclampsia. In the spirit of nationalism, the Brazilian authority took Carmen's coffin back to the country as thousands of fans crowded the streets of Rio in her honour. Now get ready to uncover another shocking tale from the shadows of Hollywood. In our next video we unveil a scandal that rocked the industry. How Jill Ireland became a victim of adoption scam.